Sussex Sharks maintained their perfect start to this season's CB40 competition by beating Yorkshire by four wickets with 37 balls to spare at the Probis County Ground, with Luke Wright smashing a sensational 100. Andrew Gale won the toss for the visitors, soon to realise that the pitch was a little quicker than he anticipated. This was a nasty blow off the bowling of Amjad Khan. Recovered from that, Gale and his partner Adam Lythe got their side off to a steady enough start. There were, of course, some meaty shots to make the most of the fielding restrictions, but largely Sussex kept it tight. Gale tried to unlock the shackles by uppercutting Khan for a six, but his side could still only muster 49 runs from their first nine overs. It may have been better for them had Lythe had more of the strike. He hit a breezy 27 off 19 balls, but then failed to hit Chris Nash over the top and was caught by acting Sussex captain Ed Joyce. Joyce had soon turned to his spinners, who'd been so successful in the win over Northants last weekend. They were all a little more expensive on this occasion, as Australian Phil Jake started to find his range. Gale, too, just started to pick up the pace of his innings a little, although boundaries weren't always that easy to find. This pair dragged the total along to 97 at the end of the 18th over, with a final total of 250 or a bit more in their sights. They were pegged back for a moment when Gale departed for 42, swinging across a ball from Nash, whose eight overs cost only 34 runs. The middle overs are, of course, so important, and this session was won by Sussex, as Gary Balance and Jakes could only add 38 in seven overs. And Yorkshire weren't helped in their quest by losing wickets just as partnerships started to develop. Jakes was next to go at 135 for three in the 26th over, as on 37, he chipped a quicker ball from Monty Panasar to mid-wicket. Now Yorkshire did pick up the pace, with Balance looking to go big. He had some success in planting a Will Beer long hop over the ropes. But the leggy got his revenge when Balance skied a shot out to Joyce, who took a very good catch. Balance was gone for 40. All of the Yorkshire batsmen had made decent starts, but crucially, none of them had stayed in to make a big impact. That meant that they now had to rebuild a little with Joe Root and Anthony McGrath. Normally a dour opener, Root played some extraordinary shots, while McGrath used all of his vast experience to keep the board ticking over. This stand was creating some frustration for the Sharks, as the pair added 65 in eight overs to push them towards that total of 250. Sussex, though, pride themselves on their excellent bowling at the death, and here they pegged Yorkshire back magnificently, once McGrath gave Ben Brown a running catch off Chris Liddell to go for 26. Yorkshire are on 226 for five with three overs to go, but those last 18 balls importantly brought them only a further 12 runs. Root was next to go for a top score of 46, another cheeky shot finding Panasar at fine leg. Azim Rafiq followed two balls later with an edge behind off Khan. Gerard Brophy had his leg stump knocked out by Liddell. And Ryan Sybottom was out in the last over as Khan eventually decided to go for the catch himself to earn his third wicket. Yorkshire's final total of 238 for nine looked well below par. Especially given the freedom in which Sussex score at the top of their order, something they've done in both one-day and four-day cricket this summer. Knowing the importance of a quick start, Nash hit Mitchell Stark's opening over for 18, an over which in total went for 21. Sybottom then began with a Y but settled in with five dot balls and the wicket of Joyce before he'd scored, though it took some catch from Root to dislodge him. That brought Wright to the crease for the first time at the Probis County Ground since last July and he was soon looking very good. Sybottom may have started well but Wright was soon ruining his figures with the former England man soon going for 10 per over. When they are in form, there are few better spectacles than watching Nash and Wright playing their shots. Their timing and placement were spot on, and they were already making huge dents into their target of 239 by knocking off 71 of those runs in the first seven overs. Nash had made 44 from only 31 balls, but was then cruelly run out by the toe of Stark, about the only decent thing the big Aussie did throughout the match. Wright found him easy enough to play, cutting him for a six as the recent acquisition from down under went for 71 runs from his eight overs. 
Murray Goodwin would have liked an innings, but lasted only two balls. He was very well held at slip by a diving balance to go at 87 for three after 10 overs. You may have thought that Sussex would now have tried to ease their way to the victory line, but that was not on the mind of Joe Gatting, who twice put Azim Rafiq into the spectators. It looked as if Sussex were determined to win this match by a distance. Gatting and Wright made sure that they kept their side miles ahead of the rate. It was becoming a walk in the park for the Sharks, who were well on their way to recording their third win from three games in this competition. Wright had hardly had to break into a sweat as he headed towards a second successive half-century in this year's Clydesdale Bank 40. It arrived with another boundary off the hapless Stark. That was Wright's sixth four to go with 1-6 as he reached his 50 of 49 deliveries. Gatting needed a maximum himself to go to a 50 of 43 balls, but he was held in the deep off route for 45. He left with his side on 177 for four, a map Machin and Wright soon brought up the 200 in only the 28th over. Machin couldn't take his side over the line, however. He gave Root the pick of the Yorkshire bowlers, even though he bowled only four overs, his second wicket. Now needing only 36 runs to win from 12 overs, Sussex could afford to walk to their target, the game long since over in reality. So now all eyes turned to Wright to see if he could complete his 100. A second six took him four runs away. And his 91st ball, he spanked a delivery from Stark over mid-off to take him to three figures. It was a splendid knock on his return to Hove, which had included ten fours and two sixes. He'd taken his side close to the winning line at an absolute canter. His only disappointment was that he wasn't there at the end. With only four needed, he was sent back by Brown and run out by Lythe for an exceptional 103. Two balls later, Brown hit the winning boundary and Sussex had raced over the line with six overs and a ball still left in the bank. It was another outstanding performance from the Sharks, who are now 3-0 in the CB40 this season. Their next match is in Southend, where they meet the Unicorns on Sunday, June the 3rd.